In today's video, I want to talk to you about photographing with telephoto lenses. And uh, if you watch my video uh, often, then you know uh, I just love these things. And I've got uh, two of them that I use very regular. Uh, I think my favorite one, this is the 40 to 150. Uh, and since the Olympus is a two times crop camera, uh, compared to a full frame, this is a, a 80 to 300 uh, millimeter lens. And this one, the, the big one, is the 100 to 400. So compared uh, to the full frame equivalent, it's a 200 to 800 millimeter lens. And yeah, I just love these lenses. And I wanted to make this video for quite some time now. And it's actually inspired by uh, a session that I joined uh, on a photo fair uh, last summer. So I attended a, a presentation of a landscape uh, photographer. And uh, she actually started the presentation with uh, uh, that in her opinion, a landscape photo had to do uh, on three criterias. And the first of the criteria was it had to have uh, uh, a foreground, a midground, and a background. Uh, the second was that the photo had to be sharp from the front to the back. And the third, and that's the most thing that blew me from my chair, a landscape photo had to be a wide angle shot. And I just, I was sitting in that audience and I was thinking to myself, oh, I must be doing something wrong here because I shoot the majority of my images with a telephoto lens. So that's why I wanted to show you uh, what you can do with these beasts as a landscape photographer. And just to show you how much I use these two lenses, uh, let me show you in Lightroom. If you go to your library, on top, I've got mine in Dutch, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, uh, if you go to library and you select in categories on the left side, you select all pictures. Then you can, uh, uh, on the top section here, just above all the images, it says metadata. So if you click that, you can see which camera, which lens, which year, uh, which tags you put onto it, and you can select all these images. So my most used wide angle lens, if you have a look uh, uh, in this list, uh, you will see uh, the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8, that's the pro lens that I have uh, uh, most of the times, in my main library where I keep only the best images that I think these are worth uh, saving, I shot 3,595 images with that lens. And the 7 to 14, that's the ultra wide angle that I have, uh, I kept almost 400 images. So if you uh, put those together, roughly 4,000 images over the past two years, because this library has only images of the past two years in it. And before that, it's, uh, it's just uh, <laughs> not in here. I had a computer crash once and uh, I had to restart a complete new library. But if you go down here and you look at my 40 to 150 lens, so that's this telephoto that I have right here, I shot 4,416 images with this lens only. So I shot more with this than with my wide angle lens. And the four, 100 to 400, that's this one, has 2,800 images. So that's 4,000 with my wide-angle lens. And yeah, let's say about uh, roughly 6,500 with those two lenses. So I think these are absolutely worth uh, showing what you can do with them. Uh, you've seen this in the last Sunday if you, Sunday's video. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a, a panorama. Um, and this is actually shot at 138 uh, millimeters. So uh, yeah, absolutely uh, beautiful light. And if you would have a wide angle with you, you would have never taken this shot. And uh, the light uh, yeah, was pretty, pretty harsh already. And the sun was lifting above this uh, tree line in the back. So you can see if you watch uh, last uh, week's video. So I'll put a link uh, up here. Uh, yeah, you can only capture this light with a telephoto when you leave out the sky. And the only way to do this is by using, in this case, I used this one, the 100 to 400, and zoomed it in all the way uh, yeah, until the 138. And I was uh, able to capture this shot. And I think this is one of my uh, most stunning shots uh, recently, and uh, maybe one of my favorite shots from uh, the coming year. And uh, yeah, I shot this at 269 millimeters, and these are all uh, millimeters from these lenses so it's not uh, compared to full frame so you have to double it if you want to uh, uh, compare it with a full frame uh, camera but uh, yeah I, I think just a stunning image and once again I left off the sky so I could capture this uh, this light would the sky be in this image 
yeah, it, it just wouldn't have worked. This light would never have been in this image. So that's why I love these lenses. Uh, you can just get that, that golden light in those images. This one also, it shot straight down. So I was standing on a little hill. This uh, leaf was hanging above water. So what you see in the background is a reflection of higher trees in the water. And the light just perfectly hit this, uh, yeah, this leaf here. And it shot at, I think, 45 uh, millimeters. And uh, it's just the beginning of this lens, but just an, an amazing uh, yeah, lens. And I think if I would have got it a little bit wider, you would have seen the shore on the other side. And I would have cropped it out. So with this, I don't have to crop anymore. So that's a really big advantage. Yeah, this is one of my all time favorite images. I think I've seen it, uh, I've shown it before on this channel. Uh, this is also shot at 45 uh, millimeters. This is uh, uh, my family. And I just walked away from this uh, uh, waterfall and I turned around, saw this shot and I quickly put on this lens, shot the image. And uh, yeah, I'm still really happy with uh, how, this, uh, how this turned out. So uh, yeah, just a, a brilliant shot. And yeah, it's at the start of this uh, lens, but if I, would have had the 12 to 40 on i would have got a little bit of sky in the frame and yeah that would have been uh, that would have been a shame yeah this is also one uh, this is a little bit further zoomed in this is 75 uh, uh, millimeters and just keeping the sun out would have got a, a bit of a wider frame than the sky would have been in this shot and yeah it, you never would have caught this atmosphere uh, like i did in uh, in this image so i'm really happy with uh, with how this uh, this one turned out i think this is one of my best uh, purple header pictures from uh, from last year. This is also one, and I'm getting above the 100 millimeters right now, so I'm still using this 40 to 150. Uh, yeah, two little ducks uh, swimming with beautiful light coming from the background. And would you include the sun? The scene would have looked completely different. But just because you leave out the sun and concentrate only on those uh, uh, those elements in the scene that you really like, you just have yeah. <laughs> stunning, uh, stunning images like this. This is actually the first uh, shot that I took with this lens. So uh, this is at 142 uh, millimeters. So I would have still been able to shot this, shoot it with this lens, but uh, I had this one on the camera, so I, I just uh, kept with it. But uh, yeah, it's just very far zoomed away, and just above the fog here, the tree line ended, and uh, the fog disappeared. So I would have got a little bit of a wider frame. I would have never been able to uh, to isolate this tree uh, from uh, from its background. Yeah, this image is actually the end of this lens. So uh, this one goes to 150, and this is shot at exactly 150. So I used this one completely zoomed in and uh, caught this first light in the morning. Uh, beautiful scene, and I'm just really happy with how this uh, this image uh, turned out. So it's actually a little bit of a yeah combination of the blue hour and uh, the golden hour just getting started. So uh, that's why I really like uh, this image. But once again, uh, in the foreground was a pond that, that distracted from, from the scene. And just above those trees here, there was a blown out sky. Uh, so that's why I just uh, cut it off. And uh, yeah, it, it's really, really easy with using uh, telephoto lenses. Yeah, I'll put a link up to this video uh, up here. So uh, I used this lens for uh, uh, for this image, and it's actually uh, zoomed in uh, quite far. So I think it's a one 169 uh, millimeters. And once again, I cut off the sky and uh, zoomed into this tree. And I was just waiting until the sun came over the side. So the sun was coming a little bit from the right side here. And uh, I just waited until it popped over those, uh, those trees and hit this little tree. And uh, yeah, I just love this fairy tale like uh, feeling to this uh, image. So I'm really happy with this, uh, how this shot uh, turned out. Yeah, this is a little bit further. This is 200 millimeters, quite far. And if you have a look at the video that's coming this Sunday, uh, I'm going back to this exact spot. So uh, it's actually quite funny to see how an, a scene changes and how my, my vision of a scene changes. So uh, yeah, I had completely different circumstances and yeah, I got away with a, a very nice image of uh, this area. But yeah, this one also only works because of this uh, telephoto lenses. You, I couldn't even get close to it because it's on the other side of a lake. So I would have never been able to take this shot with a wide angle uh, lens. This one also, this is my absolute favorite image from, uh, from last year. Uh, yeah, I just love this scene and I, I used this lens, the 100 to 400. 
and it's I think uh, 240 250 uh, millimeters uh, zoomed in and I just zoomed into this little valley uh, found this composition and I just waited until the sunlight came over these hills into the fog on this valley and just got this uh, beautiful golden light uh, image that I'm uh, really really happy with yeah, and even panoramas with uh, uh, a zoom lens, a telephoto lens, uh, can be very handy. And this one is actually not shot with those two lenses. This one is shot with a 300 mm prime that I borrowed from uh, Olympus. So I shot it in Scotland. I think it's about uh, 13 frames uh, in the far distance uh, that I shot in uh, portrait size. And I just shot them, stick them together in Lightroom. And I just got this beautiful light ray panorama that, yeah, I just love this image. Just not a real focal point into it, not a real foreground, uh, but I just love how these light rays come down over these, these fast uh, uh, planes here, these little hills. Yeah, just an amazing uh, panorama. This is also shot with that same 300 millimeter that I, uh, that I borrowed back then. And uh, yeah, it, if you look around this scene, there's just nothing. There's nothing to the right of interest, nothing to the left. Uh, on top, those trees weren't uh, really uh, interesting to look at. And I just love this reflection in the water. So I lay down on the ground, uh, found this composition, and I just really like the abstract uh, of this image, and especially how you see the, the top and the bottom and completely different, uh, uh, yeah, normal, uh, normal on top, abstract on the bottom. Yeah, it's just a, a two-in-one image that I really like. Uh, this is shot with this lens and uh, I think this is uh, we're, we're getting to the to the end focal range of this lens I think because this is shot at 307 millimeters and um, yeah it's just uh, uh, amazing I, I just saw this light coming over the hills on the other side of the log quickly stepped out of the car put this lens on and I just followed that light until I, I saw something of interest coming into the frame and I just love how these little fences uh, go around these trees a little painty atmosphere to this image so uh, yeah really uh, happy with this one and I would have never been able to shoot this with a wide angle lens but still it's a landscape shot and still it has absolutely some value to me in, in photography yeah this also this is at the end of this lens so this one goes to 400 and this is shot at exactly 400 millimeters so completely zoomed in it's actually quite difficult to keep it stable even on a tripod when there's a little bit of wind uh, my advice, if there's a little bit of wind and you use a large telephoto, just get rid of these yeah, sun caps. Uh, there's a lot of wind coming in them and it just uh, gets them out of balance uh, pretty easily. So leave them off if you're having a little bit of wind. Uh, you, don't, you don't need them every any time. You, you can shield the sun with your hand, for example, and then uh, it won't be able to catch the light. Or stand in front of your lens with your jacket. It also helps uh, a lot to, to keep the lens stable. But there's also a use for these lenses in abstract photography. And uh, I'm having a couple of shots here that I just shot straight down. So put the camera on the tripod to the ground, zoomed it in until 150 uh, millimeters. So it's completely uh, fully zoomed in. And uh, yeah, you can find these abstract images. So uh, like this one, these little plants with those needles from, uh, from the trees uh, falling into the water and those white uh, patches that you see is actually the reflections from the sky coming through the canopy uh, of this forest. So I just uh, really like that. And also with these ice uh, images from a couple of weeks ago, uh, it's just shot straight down with this lens. And I know you can shoot those with a macro lens, but if you don't have a macro lens with you, uh, you can easily shoot those with telephoto lenses. So you have you have a lot of possibilities with those lenses. So this one also really abstract. But uh, yeah, those shapes, uh, you, you can see it's razor sharp and you don't need a macro lens to, to shoot these images. You can easily shoot it with a, a good uh, telephoto lens. And even in woodland photography, uh, which yeah, ultimately uh, is, is the area for wide angle uh, images, there are still images in a woodland that you can very easily shoot with a telephoto lens. Like this tree that I saw on the other side of a hill and I noticed how the light was catching this uh, uh, this beautiful tree here and it's shot at 82 uh, millimeters so that's a, a full frame equivalent of 160 uh, millimeters and I could have walked towards it but then uh, yeah, the composition would have been completely different but I just liked uh, uh, 
the idea that I was standing in the middle of this tree would have gotten closer than I would have shot more up to this tree and I didn't like that uh, composition that much. So also this one, uh, this is actually pretty far zoomed in. This is I think at 100 uh, millimeters with this lens, 40 to 150. Uh, I just wanted to catch this light and I just liked how this uh, tree in the front had a completely different shape than the ones in the background. This is another example, just a uh, shot up with a telephoto lens. Uh, I think at 150 uh, millimeters, so it's uh, this lens. And uh, uh, yeah, I just loved how this light hit this, these couple of leaves uh, coming out of this tree. And even with the big one, the 100 to 400, uh, there are some possibilities. But then I'm, I'm thinking more uh, abstract when I'm walking through a forest. And I tend to use this technique on uh, the more difficult days. So in, in this case, uh, it was a bit of a dull day. So I was just looking for uh, parts of leaves that were lit up. And uh, I just underexposed the image once again, underexposing it. And uh, the lit up leaf just stays where it is. And uh, I just like uh, uh, how this piece of leaf is completely isolated from uh, the rest of the forest. And the same with this one. All these leaves were in the light, everything around it in the back was, was in, the, in the shadow. So you can really create this, uh, yeah, this nice contrast that, uh, that I really like uh, uh, in images. So those were some of my examples on uh, why I use this telephoto lens uh, as much as I do. And uh, yeah, I just love these lenses and uh, it gives you so much, sorry, it gives you so much more opportunities uh, uh, in the field, uh, far more uh, creative ideas. You, you can use it in, in with anything. You can shoot abstract, you can shoot forest, you can shoot long distance shots, and you can even focus in the foreground on, uh, on something uh, smaller. And it especially helps with catching this, this golden light on a day where the, the sunlight is pretty hard or where, where you uh, can exclude the sky from your image. So uh, yeah, I hope you will put them in the bag next time when you go out for uh, landscape photography. And uh, I hope you uh, have some use uh, for this video. So hope to see you this Sunday. I'm uh, going back to the forest uh, of Oysterwijk where I shot uh, last week's video. And uh, yeah, the trip actually continues where that one ended with some uh, still some stunning images uh, to come. So I hope you're going to like that and uh, hope to see you then. Thanks for watching now and uh, bye bye.